Hi, this is Dr. Elizabeth Clotis, and you're coming grocery shopping with me today. First thing I want to say is I start with a list. I never come to a grocery store without a list because otherwise I stray, <laughs> and this just keeps me on task. I try to head to the produce section straight away because that's where I do most of my grocery shopping. My favorite green actually is arugula. It is super full of antioxidants. It's actually part of the brassica family, which is the same as cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, broccoli. It feels like, well, how would this be related? But it shares a lot of the same beneficial properties. And there's a lot of research about brassica vegetables preventing cancer, helping prevent cancer. So I'm, I'm getting some arugula. Okay, I've got my greens. Next on my list, okay, cucumbers, which I love, and I'm going to have those with hummus. Nice little, little cute ones. They're, they're easy for cutting up and dipping into, into hummus. And, ooh, blueberries, hold on. Okay, so I have a little thing I do. I check and see whether they're firm. If they're kind of squishy, I don't buy them. These are firm. I'm going to go ahead and, and pick these up. I like strawberries, but these are white, and I'm sure they maybe they taste like amazing. I just can't get into white strawberries. I don't know. Maybe I'm <laughs> just me. So one of the things I'm making this week is corn, um, is pasta with corn, and um, corn is it's, it's the fall, so it's a great time for corn and a perfect herb accompaniment to corn is tarragon. It's like a magic combination. So I'm gonna find tarragon here, kind of the fresh herb section. Oh, and there it is. Let's shake off the, the water. I don't need the extra water. And tarragon smells and tastes like um, licorice. And if you cut it up and add it to corn, it just tastes amazing. Oh, look how pretty. So I'm going to get four, because that's what the recipe calls for. My corn, got my corn, got my tarragon. I have pasta at home already, so I don't need anything else for that. It also calls for Parmesan cheese, which I have at home, and some goat cheese, which I also have, so I am good. Okay, back to my list. Okay, I guess we're done here, and we're going to the dairy section. The store I shop at has a beautiful meat section and a seafood section, and I will sometimes stop and, and take salmon. I just don't need it for this week. I love salmon, it's my favorite fish, um, but I don't need it this week. And then there's all sorts of chicken. I Honestly, this is an area I don't shop at much. I, this is just, I've over time have really gotten away from eating a lot of meat. Okay. Let's, let's go get some yogurt and cheese. I really like Greek yogurt just because it's richer and thicker um, and has generally a higher protein content um, per amount. That's my typical accompaniment to my berries in the morning. And then there's a cheese that I really like, which is found in an odd section Is it here? There it is. And it's not, you know, there's not a lot of it, but it's amazing. It is, and I have no, no relationship with this company. It's got Lifeway Farmer Cheese, and this is like a, um, like a, it's not a low-fat cream cheese. It's just, um, well, it's farmer's cheese, so it's um, much lower in calories. So a half a cup has 160 calories and 13 grams of protein very low in saturated fat and sodium. So I really, I really like this and, and I use this instead of cream cheese on, on toast. Don't look at the candies, don't look at the candies, just walk on by. Chips. <laughs> I do, I do like crunchy chips. Okay, let's, let's do that. It's Friday. I might have some with, with guacamole later. So there's many different types of tortilla chips and um, you can find ones that are sodium free and they're really delicious. And 
unsalted tortilla chips. And actually, you know, as it turns out, you don't need the tortilla chips to be salted to enjoy them with, with guacamole. The guacamole is flavorful enough. So you save a lot of sodium content by, by looking for no salt um, tortilla chips. Okay, so the bread section can sometimes be overwhelming. There's just so many choices, right? And um, I really look for um, bread that's dense and whole. And I love rye, pumpernickel, things like that. If you look at the, the fiber content of this, one little slice, which is actually not that big, it's pretty thin, has eight grams of fiber, which is pretty good. You know, let's compare it to, I don't know, just what's right underneath here. Um, this has 90 calories per slice, but less than one gram of fiber. So, you know, you're really, now even if I have two of these so I have the same calories I have much less fiber this tells me that this bread has you know much less um, less whole grains so I really like this now you have to like dense bread and I I do because it it fills me up and it makes me feel like I'm actually eating something as opposed to something white and fluffy so this is the bread that's gonna end up in my cart Again, going off the list, but that's okay because I forgot that I need bread. Okay, coffee, I've got that at home. I always have coffee at home because if I don't have a cup of coffee when I start the morning, it's not a good day. Let's find the tomatoes. I really like this brand, Pomi, and the reason why I like it is it comes in the what are called Tetra Packs, which are these little boxes, and the advantage of these is that the lining is BPA free and some of the lining in cans, it's designed to protect the can from corrosion because what's inside is acidic. The problem is those linings can have negative health effects and some of the, the constituents of those linings can actually leak into food. So the Tetra Packs are a great way to know that that's just not gonna happen because their lining is different. There's no, there's no metal that, that is being protected. So here's my chopped tomatoes for my next chana masala. Another thing on my list is rice. So let's go to the rice section. Now there's all sorts of choices. You can have ones that are pretty instant. So you just put them in the microwave and heat them up. And there's others that you need to make from scratch. I. I, honestly, there are times when I take the easy way out and, and do the, you know, the little packets that I put in the microwave, but I also like to cook um, rice in larger amounts from scratch. And then I always use brown rice. And, and the reason for that is because white, white rice is essentially brown rice with the external shell stripped off. And that means that white rice is primarily starch, so it's really easy to digest and, and can cause blood sugar elevations. And it's, kind of, it's a simple, you know, simple, almost processed carbohydrate. Whereas brown rice, it takes a long time to digest because you have to get through the bran and the germ to actually get to the starchy center. And, and that means it's, it's just longer for it to break down in our digestive system. So it's generally healthier, plus higher fiber, always good. The one thing I would be wary of is when you, you know, purchase things that are already pre-spiced, really look at the sodium content because, um, you know, that, that's a really easy way for salt to sneak into foods. It's already, it's already in there. It's before you add any salt to the food. So another thing that you can do if you ever get sick of brown rice, <laughs> which sometimes I do, is remember there's a whole bunch of other grains that are available for eating and they're delicious. One of my favorites actually is farro, which is, um, which is actually a, it's wheat in, in, the, in, the, in this entirety of, of the grain. So it's, the, it's, a, it's a high fiber, um, high nutrient grain. And, um, it's also pretty high in protein, six grams for just a quarter cup. So that's, that's really good. And it cooks just like rice. So it's, it's really easy to, to prepare. Um, and it kind of stays a little um, toothy. So it's, it's more interesting to, to eat. Sometimes, you know, if you overcook rice, it's mushy. This is hard to overcook. 
Okay, I'm done with my little shopping trip. Thanks for watching. Hope you found some useful tips in there. This doesn't have to be hard. You can, you know, over time, you can figure out what's better for you, what you like to eat, and there's so much to choose from in a grocery store. It's endless. Start with the produce section, fill up your carts with, with fruits and vegetables, and build your meals around that. If you do that on a relatively consistent basis, you'll be far, far ahead in terms of health. Thanks for shopping with me. See you next time. Thank you for watching this video, and I'm so proud you're taking the first step to better health. If you have any questions you'd like to discuss, please reach out in the comments below or click on one of the videos on the screen. Visit StepOneFoods.com for more information on how to start your journey to living long and well.